Hey guys, so welcome back to Gab with Gab. I know it's been a little bit of a hot second. Um, I'm planning on doing it every other week, but the power went out this past week, so I was not able to record, but I'm back recording today, so that means there'll be an episode this week and next week, if all goes to plan. But, um, before we get begin, I don't know if you could tell by the title, but today we will be talking about some serious issues, particularly dealing with the Supreme Court's overturning of Roe v. Wade. Um, I want to start out by saying this is not the video where I sit down and tell you all the reasons I think that you should be pro-choice. Um, I am happy to do that. I have done that on other places on the internet, but today I thought it was important to create a space that was more about encouragement and healing rather than completely fueled by anger and disappointment. So, um, also I want you guys to take what you need from this video. It will be like kind of two parts. Um, first, I'm going to talk about like what you can do um, to help <laughs> and to try to protect and safeguard uh, reproductive rights in healthcare. Um, and then the second part is how you can kind of take care of yourself and your own mental health during this time. I know it's already been over two weeks um, and there's still a lot of feelings. There should be still a lot of feelings. And sometimes you need to need some encouragement um, to kind of like process and be able to still be yourself, even when it feels like the world's falling apart. So that's going to be the second part. But starting with part one, um, let's just jump right in. So first thing that you can do is donate. Now, me sitting here in my position, I... I am a broke college student with a part-time job. I love my job, by the way. But I am not necessarily the one that has a ton of money to donate. Luckily, my family and I have, through my family, we've been able to donate to a few places. But I want to encourage people to donate to places that actually are helping. So um, I know a lot of us were frustrated when, as soon as the overturning happened, we got texts, emails, calls from the Democratic National Convention asking us to donate to help get more can of their candidates in office. And while I think it's extremely important to vote, and I'll talk about that in a second, I that was a little frustrating, I think, for a lot of people. And so I found a few other places where you can put your money that's going to be more impactful on like a person-to-person -person basis. So obviously, um, we have Planned Parenthood. Um, also, I'm going to attach all these links down below. But, but there's also this beautiful document. I'm not exactly sure who made it. It's a Google Doc. Um, I'll, like, attach it in here somewhere. And it has um, the abortion funds for every state in the U.S. listed on here. There's also a separate website that's, like, a Squarespace version of it. Um, and there's different websites. There are Instagram handles for each different organization. And... So you can go to your state specifically or like a neighboring red state or anywhere and donate for those specific um, abortion funds, which is really great. I was honestly really inspired when I was researching for this video because a lot of people are working hard to get resources like this and education or resources out there for us. Um, it can be a little overwhelming. So that's another reason why I wanted to do this video to create a little bit more of a guide, but there are a lot of people who are doing some pretty awesome things, which is inspiring. Anyway, so that's donating. And also, um, local, like, Planned Parenthood and fertility clinics, but being careful not to donate to ones that look like they're protective of reproductive health care, but really they just, like, convince people not to get abortions because that is uh, donating to a pro-life organization pretending to be a pro-choice organization, which is just... Not great. Anyway, um, you can also go to protests. I know that a few of the larger protests have not died down a little, but I've seen less of them, um, which I think they will continue, hopefully will continue, and I will post a few uh, if I see there's some in, like, the areas, if you, like, live by me, if you know me personally, but um, you can join Facebook groups to learn about those. You can... There's some people that post it. There's a lot of TikTokers out there who will post about protests, and there's also TikTokers that post about how to dress, um, 
if you're at a protest or a protest that could turn into a riot to protect yourself, it's not only important to go to protests, but it's inspiring to stand with a group of people who believe in the same things you do. And also, there are some funny signs that people make, and as disheartening as it is what's going on, sometimes looking at somebody's funny sign can lighten the load a little bit. Anyway, another thing you can do is educate yourself. So, this looks like a lot of different things. For me, I mostly reading. Um, my knowledge of what the actual Roe v. Wade case was, where the anti-abortion mindset came about and why it affects people of color differently than people who are sitting in privileged positions like me uh, was not up to par, I must say. And I don't think it's up to par for a lot of people. Um, but you can change that as much as you want to. So I have, I want to recommend start read as much as you're comfortable with. I also understand that some of this reading can be triggering. So there's um, a few non-fiction books about the case itself, and then I'll list a few other links, but, um, sorry, I'm just checking over my notes here. The, um, new handbook for a post row America, Complete Guide to Abortion, Legality, Access, and Practical Support, is a book that I think I'm going to be purchasing and reading because I feel like it's said to give a really just great comprehensive understanding of like the real like law part of it um and there's also I'll also record another list of nonfiction books that you can read as well about what's going on also there's some great tiktokers out there I'm hoping I can find them again to put on here that speak about it um honestly I've learned a lot of stuff through tiktok which you know fact check but a lot of people want to help provide real education i'd like to think my tiktok page isn't propaganda and so you can also check those things through online resources as well and then another thing that you can do which is important but can feel frustrating at times is vote and i say it can feel frustrating because we obviously have a democratic president office we have a lot of democrat democrats in the in congress but president biden just did just sign the executive order i think it was um yesterday when i'm filming this might have been two days ago um trying to protect some of our reproductive health care rights so that was great but i know for example like i said earlier when the text came out asking for money it was like bro what's going on but voting is important especially now on the state senate and state congress level i used to never think about those elections care about them i mean i've only voted once twice before i don't even know if i voted last year which is crazy um i don't think there was a ton of stuff up last year but i'm definitely voting this year if you live in ohio um you have to pre-register to vote there is a deadline and it is significantly before election day which kind of stinks but we have time um i think the deadline to register for the primaries passed but obviously the main election you can still register to vote for in, and i will include that information below but at least in my districts, there's state senate and state house rep or yeah state house representative seats up, and there's a governor race in Ohio, and all these things are really important because now that uh, the Roe v. Wade is overturned, those laws are up to the states. So I am making it part of my personal mission to educate people on those elections and and educate them on the candidates. I've made a few TikToks about this already, but I'm happy to go into detail from other districts as well. Just let me know um, if you're interested in that. But I think we should remember that, because I think I turned 18, my first time voting was for a presidential election, which made it feel important, made sure I registered, like got my absentee ballot. But I think sometimes on the off years or the like midterm elections, people don't realize the importance and I think we need to try to encourage each other to do that so those are like the big few things that you can do to help right now I know sometimes it feels like the world is falling apart but even doing what you can what energy you can put into it will not only help the cause but also possibly give you some peace of mind and along with going that we'll kind of jump into part two which is, along with that we'll jump into part two which is um what 
you can do to take care of yourself. So obviously there's a lot going on and my first thing that I think is important is boundaries and this comes in multiple different ways. Um, one is recognizing do I have enough energy to can try to persuade and convince people of what I believe to be true because sometimes you don't and that is a hundred percent okay but we were like oh like I need to try to do my best to like help other people come to the realization and understanding that I have and sometimes that just takes so much out of you and your well is constantly dry and it is okay to not always be the leading charge in convincing other people because some people genuinely are stuck in their ways but there are a few tiktokers who used to be pro-life who are now pro-choice who talk about what changed their mind and if I find the one I'm thinking of I will insert one of her best videos here but another boundary that's important does have to do with tiktok does have to do with social media so for me when everything first came out I was learning a lot about it through my social media pages I was learning about what we could do or like what this really meant specifically and that was super helpful to me but then liking those posts saving those posts more of them got pushed onto my feed and I started to hear a lot of specific stories about women who needed help and weren't able to get it anymore or about other terrible and horrific things that have happened and it was my entire for you page and all of a sudden I felt like I couldn't go on my phone without feeling the weight of the world being tripled, quadrupled, pushed out on me. And I think what I learned is I gotta click the not interested button sometimes. Even if it's a if it's a cause I support and believe in, sometimes you need a safe space on your phone. So many of us are trained to use our phones to decompress from life that when your phone isn't helping you decompress, it's just making things more anxiety and like you don't know how to help you don't know how to move forward you're just like like um absorbing all of that stress that's not a great thing i also do have two different tiktok accounts started using one and interacting with those posts for the pro-choice movement and the other one i have just tried to keep pure like what's going on with stranger things like pop culture like cleaning hacks videos like that just so i have that separation while i'm still being educated that is a super important boundary for me and one I recommend to other people as well. Um, but another boundary, which can be a little bit harder sometimes, is with your family. Now, I am lucky enough that my family agrees with the same viewpoint I do. But that doesn't mean there's still times where I feel like my mental capacity and my stress levels can't handle conversations that happen in the house. So, obviously, like, I've had really great conversations with my parents and my sister about this stuff, but there comes a time when you're talking about the same thing and you're hearing some details of specific stories that you don't necessarily want or need to hear. I know my mom reads a lot of like news articles online and reads all of it, all the sometimes very gruesome and heart-wrenching details. And while I think it's important to understand the drastity, I don't think that's the word, understand the tragedy that is going on and happening right now I personally cannot handle every specific detail um it's very heart-wrenching and very anxiety producing and I would like to learn about events with our out always feeling like again like there's just too much weight on my shoulders and that might be somewhat controversial to say but like I've said to my mom who of course is like doesn't want to make me feel more anxious than I am she knows I already am upset about everything going on but hey like obviously I want to understand what's going on whatever event that occurred but I don't need to know every specific detail of every person there because I already know how terrible the situation was and I already feel for them so much that it's just somewhat overwhelming and sometimes it prevents you from being able to function um if you have anxiety or if you've experienced anxiety or like depression before you know how sometimes it can just build and build and build and it becomes all of who you are and I'm trying to prevent that from happening for myself so that's a boundary that I've had to kind of in place and enforce for myself as well okay and then another few things you can do for you in these times is reading 
but not in the sense just to educate yourself, but more to inspire yourself. So on one hand, there are the nonfiction books about the case, about abortion legalities, about what America is looking at right now, but there's also just books of strong women. And there are plenty of nonfiction books, plenty of biographies, autobiographies out there. I just read Becoming by Michelle Obama a few weeks ago, and that was an inspiring story for me to hear or to read and understand. Um, but there's also fiction books, and sometimes you need inspiration from a fictional world because fictional worlds are in, usually in some way similar to our own. Um, and sometimes you just need a reminder of how strong the people around you are and not everything is as extreme as people um, say online and on the news and that there is goodness in people overall or we'd like to hope so. And I think reading for me has somewhat been an escape but also has been a way for me to find humanity in other people again and also remember my own strength as a woman in this world. Um, also speaking on mental health, it is important to not let yourself lose habits that you've put in place to take care of yourself. I know being active is important to me to clear my mind. I know I feel worse when I don't take care of myself and I think it's still important to give yourself those things and give your let yourself use those tools when you're processing everything that's going on and that's continuing to go on right now. Um, personally, there have been days, especially the first few, where you could, I would walk into work and you could just tell there was a more of a cloud over us and there are some days where it still feels like that, but I'm also getting to, to enjoy being in the presence of other strong and inspiring and creative and hardworking women and men at work who we are all supportive of each other and that environment is so important so I, we don't feel lost and buried and hopeless because as much as it can feel like there's no hope there is and we will continue to do everything we can to help each other. Um, so that's obviously very serious note um today's episode was it was a little bit shorter as well because I wanted to get the information out there but I will be also including more links on how to take care of yourself in the description below it'll be a very link heavy video um I hope that you took something away from this that's either inspiring or comforting I am in no means trying to say I'm the master on this topic at all I just wanted to do something to try to, like, provide a guide to you guys, um, because I think if you're not standing for anything, then you are a coward at this point, um, and I am pro-choice, and I'm also want to encourage you guys to take care of yourselves, and I hope you enjoyed this video or learned something, please feel free to like share and forward to anyone who you think might need to hear some of this right now. Um, and I'll see you guys next week. Thanks for watching.